One, two, three, action. Yeah. What is up, guys? Fahan here with Za once again, and today we have Vic. Hey, how are you, hi. Vic? I'm Brother good. Vic. How are you? Oh my gosh, this is the BMW G310 R. R. Yes. Not S. Hello, no, no, R. <laughs> <laughs> and when I heard about this bike coming out in the market, I've always wanted to see it, and this is it. Mm -hmm. To my surprise, sorry to say this, uh, bro. Don't mind me saying this. Uh. Yeah. It's like a class to be. Uh. Okay, yeah, almost, <laughs> almost. I mean, the size is almost as big as my bike, you know. And I think it's because of what you mentioned just now. It's a single cylinder, uh, similar to the KTM 390. Actually, if you ride that, it will also feel like class to be. Mm. Uh, but the only difference is the power. Mm. And this is slightly lighter than the KTM. This mm. is about 150 kilos with the full system Akrapovic legal mm. uh, certified. It's about 150 only, uh, 150 to 149. So it's almost on par with a Class 2B uh, adventure bike, probably your CB190 and all that. Mm -hmm. But since the horsepower is about 34, 35, mm. uh, they say it's increasing by two. Uh, so it should be 36 plus 30 newton meter torque. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's much more better. I think it's 310 because you know why. I think in Europe. European countries they only have two classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the 310 maybe somewhere around that range Correct. is yeah. Okay. Uh, another fact about this bike uh. is BMW they are more for the riding pleasure and driving pleasure. Oh. They don't go for outright performance like KTM mm -hmm. and they don't go for very spacious kind of thing. They go uh. more for the driving experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, another surprising factor is they pick the best 400 500 cc segment bike makers mm. to build this bike which is TVS. Oh. Mm. So although it's designed in Germany, the parts mm. are from Germany, it's still built by TVS. It's still hand assembled in India it's mm. by TVS because mm. TVS has the highest uh, sold sub 500cc bikes. Mm. Uh, this, this is just like the KTM Dukes, you know, the Dukes exactly. and the K RC 200 right. and the 390. Mm. Both of them are manufactured in Correct. India by Bajaj Motor. That's right. The only difference between KTM and uh, this bike mm. is the quality. Ah. Mm. If you notice uh, the quality here, Okay, mm. you don't get cheap plastics. Yeah, it's KTM is it's very <laughs> flexible plastic, so you know the right mm -hmm. quality is there. Mm -hmm. So the suspension is very good. On road, the comfort comfort is very very good. Uh. You don't see this much on the road because yes. a lot of people are scared oh, to, yeah. to own own a Continental bike. A lot, a lot of people are scared <laughs> because of maintenance. Mm. Yes, you hear Ducati, BM, Aprilia finish. They 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 the run one mile away. Actually, okay. it's true because uh. For me, I was lucky. I was able to get a few parts changed mm. through the shop warranty. But if it's in my own pocket money, it will be a bomb. Okay, so before Vic tells us the story about his <laughs> BMW G300S, we're going to give a bit of background about it. Eh? Meant to be an introduction and a beginner class of motorcycle, the BMW G310R is a sports bike by BMW Motorrad and manufactured in India by TVS Motor Company. The G310R is BMW's first modern sub 500cc bike meant to compete with the KTM. 390 series. An adventure model, the G310GS, was released in mid-2018 based on the G310R. Engine is a 313cc, liquid-cooled single-cylinder, 4-valve UHC, with fuel injection and a 6-speed manual transmission. In Singapore, the BMW G310R is a very rare sight along with its adventure sibling, the G310GS. <laughs> so Vic, uh, I want to ask you this. Uh. Yeah. How long have you ridden the G310S? Uh, exactly one month, one mm. week. Ah, and how much you bought it at the time? Uh, it was 12.8. Uh, I traded in my previous bike. 12.8? Mm. Uh? 12.8. Oh, Actually, it's 12.5. Oh, it. It's 12.5 when I bought it because oh. they, they, they reduced the price and all that. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's a good deal, man. And they, and they gave me brand new Pirelli Rosso 2 tyres. Oh, okay. <laughs> brand new and then servicing all done, valve clearance. Brand oh, new suspension okay. from uh. oil seal. Hey, that's, that's a good deal, sir. It was a very how, good deal. How many years of COE left? Uh, this is 2027 20, October. Oh, okay. Mm. So it's registered in 2017, and mm -hmm. the mileage is only 13k when I bought it. 13k. Eh? 13k. So oh. what was the previous owner doing this bike? Okay, according to the shop guy, and oh. I actually apparently the previous owner did not remove his uh, receipt from the seat. Oh. Okay. So when I checked, he actually traded this bike for the MT09. Ah. Uh, it's a Malay guy, but mm. uh, apparently this guy does not write much. Oh, he was just keeping see, it, I so see. he took it. He took in this, then they they gave him an MTO nine. Mm. Uh, so That's the story. Being he sold it, it was like this lah, with the Akrapovic exhaust. No, Akrapovic was uh was an option from the shop. Mm -hmm. It's a brand new exhaust system. They actually bought it for him, oh, but okay. since he sold it back, they had nowhere to place it. So they offered <laughs> me for an extra price of thousand three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So since it was legal and full system, uh, I told him okay lah, fine lah. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, if it's a slip-on, mm-hmm. I won't pay that much. Mm, <laughs> I see, because yes. slip-on would not increase your power or anything. Mm. Uh, your throttle breathing is good. So your fuel consumption will slightly be better. But at the same time, it will reduce a bit of weight only. But if it's a full system, you have a bit of power gains, but not by very much. Probably for this bike, it's about 2 horsepower and probably 1.9 Nm of torque. More. Oh, That's it. I see, I see. Unless you do an ECU tune. So it's more to the sound. Right? Regardless of any bike, right? Exhaust yeah. and air filter, without an ECU tune, you will never gain uh, horsepower that much. Mm. Yeah. So it's more to the sound. Uh. More to the it's sound. Like but okay, this is not uh, very loud uh, because it's uh, Euro 4 compliant. Mm-hmm. So they welded the DB killer with it. I can't remove it. Mm, I see, yeah, but I the see. power is there. There's a big difference, and the weight is the biggest advantage you have. You save almost uh, eight kilos wow. from the stock one. Yeah, so I carry the stock one, and this pick up is slightly better with the yes. Acra, Acra on. Uh. Yes, that's right. Okay, okay. Okay. Previously, uh, what other bikes have you ridden? Okay, I've ridden quite a number of bikes. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first bike is a R15 V3. Oh. I traded that to this. Uh, okay, that bike was called Blue Venom. <laughs> so, oh, this yes, is Blue did. Venom 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, basically, I do uh, most of the engine works and everything mm-hmm. myself. Mm. I did the ECU tune and all that. Oh, you did it yourself? Wow. I do it myself, Once yes. Once again, very yeah. rare to find riders that actually DIY. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I think quite a number of them know me because I did for them also. <laughs> <laughs> R15 V3 was, uh, I think, probably is one of the fastest to be bike you have around. Mm-hmm. Except for KTM. Like, KTM is too high, uh, it's 200cc. Mm-hmm. But in the 150 segment, I think R15 easily is one of the fastest or could be the fastest. Yes. I'm not sure, but yeah. Yes, but it's a bit by the, <laughs> yes. the Minas doing Superman. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but the thing is that R15 is not comfortable. Um. Especially when you want to carry a pillion. So that, at that particular point of time, I was single. So now, you know, I'm seeing someone and all that. Oh, so I, I, need, I need a place to carry them. Mm-hmm. So and also of course BMW is quality and class together. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd just get this. You can ask me why I never choose Super 4. Oh why? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, rent, I rented a Super 4 before I bought this bike. Mm. Okay, for four days uh. I rented it. Okay. Super 4 is very powerful, yes. Everybody yes, knows that. It's four cylinder. Mm. But one thing people don't realize is because the more cylinders you have, you have high horsepower, but your torque will be low. It's the same case with all your thousand cc and six hundred cc four cylinder bikes. So without torque, you, know, you can ask me what's the difference between torque and horsepower, very simple. Horsepower determines your top speed. You can go very fast but at a very high RPM, mm. probably 7, 8, 9 and above. But you have to ref as high as 3 to 4 to go up a slope. Mm. That is the disadvantage of a 4 cylinder. But a single cylinder or 2 cylinder or 3 cylinder has more torque, so you don't really need to ref so much. Which is more suitable for a place like Singapore, which is always congested, jam mm-hmm. and all that. Mm. So, I mean, it's all uh, up to the preference, but mm. a 4 cylinder will always sound sweet. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yes. 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 It sounds nicer. La. It sounds, definitely sounds nicer. But I'm really surprised that BMW actually built this bike at all. La. The reason being is very simple. Uh. Aprilia already have 125 and 150cc. Yes, mm-hmm. correct. Ducati now they have 400cc. Okay. In Europe and other countries, especially India, ours, uh, Malaysia and all that, they call it sub 500 segment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's correct. So this is the biggest motorcycle market in the world. Mm. This is where you earn the most money. Mm. So in order for BMW to keep up, they cannot just build big bikes. Yes. Like you see for us, we need to wait three years to touch class two. And right. most of BMW bikes are class two. Mm. Mm. So, yes. so now once they touch this, in India, this is marketed as a premium compact bike, mm. ah. but for us, it's a it's a class two A bike. For BMW, this is a beginner class bike. Mm. Yes, uh, in Europe, most of them they start off with such bikes like two hundred fifty cc and above. I've seen YouTube videos more of this. Mm. They claim it to be one of the best beginner bikes because it's not super powerful. At the same time, it's not very aggressive for them. Ah, I see. So for people who are just going out on the road with a two A, then. So I think in terms of handling, it should be easy. Very light. Oh, okay, right. this is uh, mm. the advantage between this and other, uh, like especially Super 4. Mm. Super 4 is almost 200 kilos dry. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, yeah. and with petrol and other product over 200 kilos. Mm-hmm. Uh, top seat wise, yes, this will not match up with Super 4. The thing is that uh, this can go about 150 oh, so okay. far. Yeah. Um, but the handling wise, comfort, this is much more comfortable than Super 4. One thing is because you're sitting mm-hmm. higher mm-hmm. and the suspension is tuned softer. 
Ah. So both are uh, double. Uh, they have a very strategic suspension. Uh. Yeah. So yeah. Would you say that this is a naked class of motorcycle? Yes, because this it is. Like it, it is a street fighter. Mm. Oh, it's a street fighter. It is a street yeah. fighter. But it's not yes. so aggressive as a typical street fighter would yes. be. Yes, this yeah. is more for uh. comfort and uh, a bit of fun in between. So I presume the GS310 also uses the same engine as this bike, except for the. Okay, body work. The right? only difference between G GS310 and the R is the frame at the back because if you notice, this is actually two frames. Mm -hmm. One is the swing arm, yes. and the other set is a trellis frame. Uh -huh. The only difference is the swing arm and the front suspension and the back suspension. It's a lot higher, and the tires are usually off road, and the wheels are different, slightly different. Uh, uh, other than that, the performance wise, plus minus will be the same. But uh, probably you'll find harder to corner the GS because it's much higher. Uh, yes. I think maybe because is it uh, really built for off road or adventure? Uh, as far as I know, it's not a good off road bike. Oh, you yeah. not really a hardcore off road bike. It's more uh -huh. for people who was like uh, okay. Why GS sells more? Because it's made in India, and we all know Indian roads are really really bad. And <laughs> really higher the bike, better the bike. And yeah. you can yeah. So uh, that's the thing. Yeah, that's one thing. And uh, the good thing about uh, this bike is first thing is single cylinder. Your fuel consumption is very good. Yes. But I get about 320. Mm. But compared to R15, of course, this is How big not is the there. Fuel tank then? It's the same as the R15, 11 liter. Mm. Yes. So I can do an apple to apple comparison. <laughs> yeah, definitely, R15 V3 has a better fuel consumption la, because it's a smaller engine. Almost half the size of this. Mm, okay. Yes. So this uh, maximum cap em uh, engine capacity is 313 cc. Oh. 313 yeah. Oh, okay. Vibration wise, does it vibrate? Yes. Too much? Uh, okay, when I first got the bike, I mm -hmm. got scared because first thing the engine was noisy. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing the vibration was quite bad. So what I did, I always do research. So oh. I go up to YouTube, they claim any single cylinder and uh, bike with uh, any single cylinder engine. Mm -hmm. The vibration is normal. Mm -hmm. So for KTM Duke 390, for this and then for DRZ and all that, the vibration is very normal, but it's not so bad actually. Mm. Yes, uh, let's say if you feel uncomfortable, then you always have your grip puppies. Mm. Ah. How is the seating posture like? Is it comfortable? Super comfortable. Wow. Really super comfortable. Uh, yeah, the seat, Sitting up straight? Uh, not exactly straight. I am I am towards mm. the thing if I need more control. Mm. Because I'm very used to the sport bike posture. Uh. As, as you know, around 5 v 3 But uh, it's very comfortable. Uh, I had one big issue with uh, my around 5 v 3 was my hand was always numb. Because mm. uh. I work in Gull Circle when I stay in Yishun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so it's okay. about 33 kilometers something like that. Then, <laughs> By the time I got off, my hand would be like super numb. <laughs> but in this bike, no, uh, not at all. Ah, okay. But I do have a lot of wind resistance compared to a sport bike. Ah, uh, I see. Because I'll see. Yes. Uh, yeah, la, Because it's a it's a yeah. naked but bike. You, you still can get a windscreen la, Add on mm. and all that. Yeah. And speaking of windscreen and right, aftermarket parts for the G310, I know it just came out. I think sometime this year, right? Uh, no, the first model is 2017. Oh, 2017. Oh, that's quite long actually. Yeah, uh, 2017 uh. is the first model. Uh, the newer model is slightly slower because of the emission mm. regulation. Mm. Uh, after market parts, yes, as you can see, I, I've done a bit of a uh, few items. One is your exhaust, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my air filter is KNN drop in. Mm. You uh -huh. can only buy a specific one. You can't buy the cone and basically oh. the shape of the air filter mm. box is like is such. Okay, the good thing about this is mm. you have three uh, 12 volt sockets, two in the front at the headlight uh -huh. area and one at the right, right below your passenger seat. Oh, okay. Which is very convenient. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, uh, you don't need to go do wiring, cut off all. Just just remove that compartment and take out and then plug in. Ah, it's wow. Plug and play. Yes, that's so uh, simple. That is, a very yes. good. that is much more easier than you, you, you know, you're going to workshop, <laughs> line up some Exactly. Wiring. So, because oh, you know, no, no yeah. one dares to mess with uh, European bikes or cars, the wiring. Yes, mm. correct, because <laughs> yeah. it's a nightmare. Yeah, it's, they're all electro electronically linked. Yeah. 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 So you mess with one, you mess up the whole wiring. Yeah. Exactly. Usually that's the case. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. so so much. We, we talk about the the performance, the good things about this bike. How about the mechanical issues? Are, <laughs> um, okay, since you already rode this for about one month plus, yeah, that's right. you have may, may not have experienced any... Uh, actually, I do because oh. I'm an everyday rider. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, I'm very sensitive to any vib smallest sound and all that. I'm mm -hmm. very sensitive, so I detect very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, since it's a single cylinder, uh, it's good to pay attention to the sound of your engine. Mm -hmm. So, when I took it, I have a warranty. So, you needed to do a bar clearance. 
Mm. It's a very common case with KTM 390. It is very similar to a KTM 390 because it's single cylinder setup. But the only difference is the engine is inverted. Usually, mm. you would see the exhaust pipe would be from the front to the back. Mm -hmm. This the exhaust pipe is from back to back is to reduce oh. the length so they have more back pressure. Oh, I see. Which I see. is why it's more torquey. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. So uh, other than that, uh, I noticed in the forums uh, and I experienced it, but because I'm a first owner for this bike, mm -hmm. the fox seal kind of leaks. So I got a lot of suggestion. They say you seal mate. Uh, but for me, I just went to a shop because warranty. <laughs> they changed for me the oil seal. Uh, yeah. But my suggestion is just, you can just do a fox fox like this. So, you know, it prevents the dirt from going up the oil seal and mm -hmm. messing it up. What kind of workshops do you go to? Okay, uh, I've never been to a workshop for major issue at all. Mm. Uh, usually for tyre change for my previous bike. For this bike is the workshop where I bought it because of the warranty. Oh. They, they had to give me warranty, so all was covered under warranty. Uh. I never forgot any single cent from my own pocket. Uh. <laughs> so, would you think the Ape Ape shop, for example, can mm. do this bike? Uh, I doubt. You doubt so? Eh? I doubt so. Mm. So, you mm. have to definitely bring it to a Unless shop that's if they are well versed with KTM, I think probably this is should not be an issue. Mm -hmm. But I still have my doubts. Because uh. this bike is not many on the road. Yeah, so true. if the bike is main, like you bring a super four, anyone uh, can do, you know. Yes, correct. Yeah, correct. Uh, anybody correct. can do. Any upper <laughs> shop can do. But this bike, I doubt because uh, just now I went to do a chain tightening at uh. Uh, Amokyo on the way back home. Like I uh, BMW. <laughs> <laughs> His reaction, I was like, oh, BMW. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, okay, speaking of that, okay, you get a lot of looks, huh? Yes. Uh, yes, a lot. You get a lot of looks. Literally, huh? a lot of looks on traffic light. Uh, because among uh, girls, they see the brand. Yeah. I'm, I'm not being sexist here, but yes. most of the girls, they know, okay, Ferrari, Lamborghini, BMW, all these are premium brands, but yes. they don't know the spec of the bike. Uh, mm. They don't know if it's a 2A bike, if it's a 2B bike, or if it's uh, a class 2 bike. They just know <laughs> that it's a brand. For those non riders, lah. Huh? Non riders, uh, I yeah. I myself dated like girls who don't even know anything about bikes. They just want to look nice. You know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, for them, it will be a very good sight for them, like, you know? Uh, yeah, but this is uh, more of a doppelganger for the bigger brother, like the R1200. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not mentioning R1250R, that's the newer mm -hmm. one, but this, the design follows the older model mm -hmm. uh, because of the 2017. So that's where it got a design from, because yes. this doesn't look like a BMW at all. Exactly. You know? uh. Because we are very used to the S1000 and S1000 mm -hmm. double R. Yes, correct, correct. Yes, so, but we do not know the leisure side of BMW, which is what they are specialized in. Uh, yeah, uh, BMW is always known for their sport bikes, uh, their, their driving bikes. pleasure. Mm. You know? uh, yes, ah, their, their driving cars, pleasures. Yes. That's right. And also for their bike lineup, is usually the GS. GS, uh, the GS 1200. The S1000. The, I mean, it's a good thing for me because I'm, I'm since young, I'm a BMW fanatic. Uh -huh. So I'm happy that they have a slightly smaller bike so that you know <laughs> I want to go commuting and all that's good. Because yeah. if I take S1000 double R, I telling mm. you, I need to, I need to drink petrol also. Really. <laughs> 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 but I do plan to get one lah, but uh, a single yeah. R lah, you know. You know, there's this meme going on uh, where BMW riders don't really use their signals. Uh. Uh, actually, it's drivers. <laughs> actually, it's drivers. Uh, okay, it's not the rider, drivers. Uh, 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 yeah. The extension there, I guess. Yeah. In, not just in Singapore, but a lot of countries, they claim this is the case. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure why. It's, you know, actually, it's factually true lah. Uh. In one way or another, yeah. Because for BMW cars, it's very nice to drive. Uh. Uh, bikes or cars lah. So, probably they get too carried away. They think they own the road kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> probably. Uh, I have to say the distinction between BMW riders yes. and BMW drivers, drivers. There is two different worlds, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, the riders uh, are more... Adventurous. Adventurous. Yes. And then, hmm. and then they are more, uh, I can say, polite. In yeah. terms of on the road. Yes, correct, correct. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh. Whereas uh. the drivers, on the other hand, is opposite. Oh, of the opposite, man. Oh my gosh. We don't talk about that. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I have an acronym for the BMW, you know. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to talk it off. Bring more women. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> and then, okay, never mind. You don't, you don't it's, it's, it's a cuss word. Uh. <laughs> it's a cuss word. I would like to ask you one question uh, since yeah. you brought up this. So, correct. do you all know what does the actual name stands for? It's a German thing. I it's forget. A, <laughs> It is a German thing. I, know, I cannot. I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. I cannot it's pronounce a, it. But yeah. I know it's motor works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually Bavarian yeah. motor works. Bavarian. Bayerische Motorenwerke. The factory Bavarian. is from Bavaria, right? Yes, correct. Uh, yes, That's yes, right. yes. Bavarian so, motor works. Oh my god, bro, you Vic, you are like. The first guy who is really passionate in Beamers, man. I, I love Beamers. Really, I love Beamers. <laughs> Actually, seriously, I also, 
I also love beamers, you know. I really love their technologies, their stylistics, their design. Mm. But then again, the price is a bit Very too expensive steep. Very okay. expensive for us. Um, okay, for cars, yes, they are more expensive. We Actually, are a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So for cars is the case, the price is very high. Mm. Of course, if you you have to compare with a Merc or an Audi, mm. but for bikes, whichever bike is on demand has the highest price. Mm. You all will be surprised, but Super 4 costs more than this. Yes. Oh, this off the showroom with COE everything, with the current COE 75, it's about 18,000 to 19,000. Mm. But Super 4 can easily touch 25k. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So because why Super 4? Anytime, anywhere, people will take it because they yes, like the it. The demand is there. Yes, because it, um, yeah, Super Four, four hundred X. Yes. Mm, now, uh, I'm not sure because due to the zero production of Super Four already, mm -hmm. but the VX Twenty Five R is going at the same ballpark price for this. Uh, yes, the new upcoming Kawasaki. Yeah. Oh my god. I just saw they had a pre-order, but I don't want to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen thousand, I can get a second-hand BMW also. <laughs> so I have a lot of uh, people when I park the bike in motorcycle uh -huh. lots. A lot of two B riders, two two A riders. They they are shocked to see a two A bike. They, they 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 think this is still class two. Two things you ask me what how's the maintenance like? For mm -hmm. me, I do my own oil change. It's mm. about one point seven to one point eight liters. Mm -hmm. Your filter you can get off uh, online eight dollars per piece, seven dollars per piece. Mm -hmm. It's the same screw on filter for all your class two B to A bikes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you can maintain on your own, you'll know more about the bike. So you can detect much faster. But the only downfall you have for any BMW bike, okay, mm -hmm. is that your service light will come out. And the only way for you to go and uh, reset it is you have to go to a shop or you need to buy the OBD scanner tool, uh. which is linked to your. Now they have that. Previously they they don't have. They have to go to a shop. Mm -hmm. It's about thirty forty dollars just to reset that. Like is this wow. OBD on sensors? Hmm? Uh, this is yes, quite. Oh, is that like KTM very, also? Uh? KTM, yeah. Uh. But the problem with KTM is their sensors. Why is not the biggest problem? Their mechanical issues is more. Mm. Oh. It's because first thing their compression ratio is very high. Mm -hmm. That is compression ratio. The higher it is, the more power the engine makes, but the downfall is your wear and tear will be higher. Yeah, that's why when we reviewed uh, the Charul and Kai's KTM mm -hmm. RC, uh, they say that to ride a KTM, you must be well versed in it. La. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I, I helped out a KTM 1290 rider just mm. a few nights ago. Uh. His coil burnt. Oh my. There was oil leaking from the coil side lah. Uh. So uh, literally the oil was but it's gooey. So meaning the <laughs> coil was super hot. Yes. Yeah. So uh European bikes, yes, the parts are expensive. So if you are like me, I buy the parts and always change myself, mm -hmm. it's okay for you. But if you go to a shop, prepare to throw a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But this bike is fairly uh reliable because uh -huh. in the reliability statistics. Uh in European uh market, I know you all will be surprised, but Ducati is first. Oh yes. Oh. oh wow. Yeah, I was shocked. Hmm. Uh, they have less than 20, uh, 40 percent uh, failure rate. Second is BMW. Oh. After that, Aprila, then the so on comes in. That's a shock. I see. Yeah. So I, I was quite shocked also. How come Ducati? But yes, po uh, people will say, hey, Ducati is not reliable. No, I scared. Yes, uh, because Ducati the spare part is much much more expensive. Uh. One coil can easily touch you one thousand, two thousand. Oh. Because Ducati is from Italy. Mm. Italian bikes and cars they are nice to look at, nice to drive, but not nice to maintain. <laughs> <laughs> they are ladies also lah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know uh, Germans they uh -huh. are very good for reliability mm -hmm. and for the fact that although it's designed in German the parts are from Germany mm -hmm. uh, from BMW straight they actually did a separate production line just for TVS to create this bike this and the GS uh, uh, so uh, this TVS mechanics were trained specially for this bike and in India they have another bike just the engine which is shared which is the TVS Apache Double R three ten. Mm. Yes, mm. Uh, it's a sport bike. So that there. is separate from the BMW lineup, yeah. the, only, the only, the only thing they share is the engine. Engine only they share lah. Yes. Like, so it was a deal between BMW and that, and of course to bring the cost down. Because mm. since BMW they are not well versed with smaller bikes, mm. they got someone who is one of the best in the market to mm -hmm. do it for them nice. Just like how KTM did with Bajaj. Yes, correct. It's the same story here. Ah, I see. Okay. Yes, but nevertheless, the quality was not compromised at all. Totally, I really love this bike. Yeah, I was quite impressed, lah. Hmm. Very, very impressed. So, would you, how would you say in Singapore, hmm. right? Are there a lot of riders riding the G310? Okay. The, the uh, my my model, the R. I only managed to see just one bike. Uh. 
I took a picture of it. <laughs> okay, anyways, <laughs> uh, since you brought it up, I've actually uh, created a Facebook group uh -huh. for BMW G310R and GS owners because I know there's no such group in Singapore. Mm. Mm -hmm. So please feel free, just just type in Singapore BMW G310, G310R owners. Give us the owners. link, we'll link it down in the video below. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure so, a lot of people want to join. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> I know, because when I look up, the well, first thing I wanted to join a group mm -hmm. and there was no group for these riders <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I was like, what? <laughs> okay, never mind, I'll just step up and why not create Thank a group. Thank God you did this review with us so that, you know, we get this, mark, this, mm. we get this bike out there. When they want to buy a bike, definitely no. they, will, see a they will see exactly. a review yeah. yes. and most of the reviews is not in the Singapore context, you know, yes. they yes. will be in the USA, US UK. Or, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, there's probably reviews on this bike, but it's probably in French, in, in German. Yeah, <laughs> they have one from Fortnite. This guy is a, he's also a YouTuber, mm. but he's from UK yeah. or something. But he kind of exaggerates shit now, so yeah, la. <laughs> but, <laughs> that looks good. I mean, yeah. the the important thing is the cost of owning the mm -hmm. bike, the maintenance of it, that is not really covered in most of the bike reviews. Exactly. So that's why we are creating these videos to let people be aware right. of, uh, okay, if you want to own this bike, yeah. okay, be prepared to face I can actually give you a rough breakdown. Uh, engine oil, I get it for about 14 to 15 dollars, mm -hmm. fully synthetic, uh, 10W50 to 40. Single cylinder have to use slightly thicker viscosity, which is great, 40 or 50, mm -hmm. because their heat is higher mm -hmm. and they need to travel out. So, uh, your oil is about two bottles, it's about $30. Then, plus your oil filter, so about $38 if you're doing it yourself. If you go to a shop, easily $60 to $70. Mm. And for BMW owners, you'll ask me, is this a real BMW? Yes, it is. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely it is. <laughs> if you ask me, yes, it is. Uh, uh, don't become like my friend. Uh, huh? He put the SYM GTS 200. Uh, <laughs> the he put the BMW logo. You know, you know when the uh, the bike just came into the market, in Singapore market, I was like, eh, serious? Uh, BMW made this bike? Uh? <laughs> so you got full from a C series. Uh, exactly. Yeah, like, <laughs> And he was like, yeah, BMW. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, there are always impersonators. I mean, uh, personally, like R15, when I was riding, there was a lot of uh, riders, no offense, it's individual choices. They tried to make you look like R1. <laughs> I do not know why. Okay, guys. Uh, get your class 2 first. Get uh. a class 2. Yes. <laughs> Okay, you have to understand something. Looks are not everything. Mm. Uh, yeah, I understand you want a bigger bike, you can't afford it. But to me, put in the effort, you can afford it. Definitely. Okay. Mm. Definitely. True, true. Yes, definitely. Work put in the effort. For it. Yes, work hard for it. Uh, set a goal, set a bike. Mm -hmm. Like for me, uh, it took me six months to choose one bike. That's a long time, man. Yes. Six months, half a year. For me, I'm a very skeptical guy when, uh. I, when I come to purchasing things. So I take my time. Mm. Initially, I actually wanted a second-hand FZ16 yeah. mm -hmm. and I settled on for a brand new R15 V3. <laughs> I do not know why, but actually I was looking at a Yamaha MT-03. Mm. Uh. Okay, because uh, two things. One is a uh, very muscular look. Second thing is Yamaha is fairly very good for maintenance. Mm -hmm. mm. It's very good for maintenance and it doesn't really screw you up in the road as much. True. Okay, uh, so I was looking at that. Then I had three choices, two MT-03, and I was scrolling carousel and then one of the shops, they, I, I don't name the shops, huh? mm. <laughs> one of the shops, they uh, listed it down. I was like, BMW? For three years? Huh? Then I called the fellow, then he said, uh, yeah, 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 it's on 2027. I was like, oh, okay, the COE 2027, okay. So he told me to come down and then, you know, we can negotiate. Mm -hmm. So I went there, I had a look at the bike. It was, uh, you would see the plastic parts were slightly faded because he just left it there for months. I was mm. like, okay. And you will see now why is it, it looks kind of new because yeah. I used a uh, setup coat, trim coat. Please PM me, bro. I want to. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. The only place you can get that now for Singapore is Amazon. It's forty-two dollars yeah. for ten sachet. Mm -hmm. You have to put your gloves and use. If not, I don't know what. You know what he was there. doing around when we came in? He was actually wiping down the bike. You know? That really shows uh, the passion. Uh. Vic has okay. for this bike, uh, for yeah. his blue shadow. Is it? Uh, blue, blue venom. venom. Blue, blue venom. venom point oh. <laughs> I know for guys who are who really got no time, they like you know go work and all that. Just mm -hmm. get get yourself three bottles of shine armor. Uh. You can you you do a dry clean. Mm. No need to wash. Mm. So mm. you'll get this shine. This is the end product. Of course, I did the ceramic coating myself mm. <laughs> So okay. yeah, maintain as long as you maintain the bike, you'll pay you back on the road. Don't worry. What is the best memories uh, that you had so far with this bike? I mean, considering that okay. it's only one uh, month with you. The best memory is. So far, I've never rode with a girl on a motorcycle. So this bike was the first bike and the first girl I'm currently talking to sat on it. And oh. we, we went for quite a, quite some time around. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. You got 
Uh, you got test the brake or not? Of course. You got test brake. Ah. Yeah, uh, okay, the brake is okay. Uh, okay. The no lah. <laughs> but then they can test. No, 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 they can test. I'm a very smooth breaker. Ah, uh, because I use two brakes at once lah. I don't, I don't like. Ah, uh, I know front brake then back brake kind of thing. Ah, uh, speaking of the brakes, I actually missed out. Ah, uh, the brake is actually a uh, sister company of Brembo, which Ooh. is by Bray. Yeah, which is what uh, KTM also uses if I'm not wrong. So bike brake is actually a good brand. The bike power is very strong. Oh, very strong. Even the back brake is enough to stop me in the traffic. Ah, ABS included. Okay. Yes. Ah, uh, the thing about ABS is when you slam on your brakes, your hand oh. will feel the vibration after that. Ah, oh. yes. Because it slowly releases. It doesn't. It, 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 it kind of uh, ah. grabs and they go, grabs yes, and they go. Yes. Same for car. Ah, yeah. uh, to me, if you're a new rider. Don't go for ABS bikes because you won't know the skill. Oh, I see. Uh, when you go for bigger bikes, uh, when you start to ride and you don't have, uh, and when when you have or don't have ABS, the actual skill will not come out. Mm. Yes. Okay. So Vic's girlfriend, just a uh, reminder. If he breaks hard, that's because of the brakes, huh? It's not because he want to play play, yeah. Huh? <laughs> 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 nah, nah. yeah, sure. I know that feeling too. Uh, when I first <laughs> played a girl on my old bike, uh, I was like, mm-hmm. uh, I told her, you know, you're the first girl to ever. Uh, she felt so honored. Yeah. But then she broke up with me. So. <laughs> I hope that never happens to me, bro. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. Okay, well, uh, okay. Coming back to the thing is, um, to me, I'm very selective of who gets on the bike. Hmm. So so far no girl has ever got on my R15 V3 yet, and too bad like slowly away. And the uh. guy still st- still trying to sell, but <laughs> 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 okay. The, I think she was the only lucky one to sit on mm. on my yeah. Uh, so yeah. hopefully, I will be back with you guys maybe with a thousand cc BMW. We are looking yeah. forward to it. <laughs> yes. I'm We're also looking, looking forward, forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. thousand. Eh? That's 1000 double R or R, I don't know. Or maybe Any, the 1200 R, which is anything, the bigger brother anything, of this bike, bro. Yeah. Anything, <laughs> okay, Vic, so, so who would you say that the G310 is for? What uh, kind of riders would okay. you reckon use this bike? Commuters, people who can take care of their bike, mm-hmm. okay, not just hey, let it throw one kind. Okay, you already should clean it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should, because a BMW has to be clean. If you guys make it look dusty, I think you're going to spoil the image. Unless it's a GS and you go for off-roading. Mm. If a GS is sitting on a car it looks dusty, then something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so coming back, yes, you have to take care of it. For mm. the price you pay and for the maintenance and all that, if you take care of it, it's good. People who, who are on a budget, please uh-huh. start on a Japanese bike. Ah, yeah. see, Yamaha bikes are fairly affordable. Mm. Honda bikes are good, uh, but the parts are slightly more expensive. I conclude that this bike, at the end of the day, if you are a really passionate uh, biker who prefers uh, a simple bike but yet uh, something that a class of its own, I think this is very suitable. Yes. You know, very simple maintenance wise, it's not so uh, expensive as the bigger brothers. Actually, most of the European brands. Lah. Mm. Yeah, for me, I like the design actually. It's very nice. It does stand out from the crowd. I mean, it's a BMW. <laughs> and it's surprising uh, that BMW has a class 2A. Uh. Thank you once again All right, for thank coming you so much. and no sharing problem. your story about this. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Right here, you know? uh, it's a beamer, <laughs> it's a legit beamer. Uh. Yes. Really. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, any riders who want to review the bike with us, do get in touch with us on our social media pages below. Okay, BMW riders out there, uh, if you are riding this model or any of the bigger model, if you have anything else to comment or any experience to share just put in the comment section below mm-hmm. like and share this video with your riding kakis and don't forget to subscribe any riders who are riding the G310 in Singapore don't forget to join the group Facebook group Pick, uh, the link is below and uh, yeah that's it for the vlog and we will see you next one <laughs>